I sense a trap. Next move. Spring the trap. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, <laughs> to another Abbey Landing. We love the quotes. Can we do great impressions? No, but we <laughs> love doing them. Um, we're here, another Happy Landing. I finally, if you've been watching Movie Meals, you might have already seen this, finally got my desk, so I'm finally getting a studio together. Uh, this is the skeleton start, but we got some cool stuff on Star Wars books up there. Looks but so good. Me, still got time to figure it out, but now I can actually figure it out, which was what I've been waiting for, was to just figure it out, have the desk, and then I can tinker with it, mess with it, try different things to finally make that amazing permanent set. But this is a lot better than what we had before. Uh, I want to eventually make it where I'm not blocking this, <laughs> but uh, but we'll tinker with it as we go here. But anyway, another Happy Landing is back. Before we rush into Season 4 of The Clone Wars, um, thank you to the Movie Meal patrons, Steve, Kimberly, and Karen, for supporting the channel. As well as go get some merch. I got some on right now. It's the uh, Thanks for Watching Mom shirt. <laughs> um, which won't be available for a whole lot longer. Oh um, my gosh. As we get close, a little tease there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we're here to review Season 4. Tan Man wants to discuss a little bit of the Dark Disciple novel we've both started. We're not super far into it. Um, but before we get any of that, Tan Man, how are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself, my guy? Uh, barely yeah, awake and alive, but... <laughs> yep, that's, how, that's how we do it here. We get up for Star Wars. That's what matters. We get up for Star Wars. Um, but we're we're here. So, Tanner, uh, what did you what are you thinking of the book so far? Dark so, Disciple. Uh, I, I was going to say, um, I can't believe as to how much of a... Uh, how much it feels like a Clone Wars episode. Um, I mean... Obviously, it's like an audiobook form, and, and when I say that, um, it, it's only in the good manners. Like, it doesn't feel kiddish or anything while we're reading through it. It's just, it's fun. Uh, Mark Thompson comes in again to do all the narration, but I mean, like, I feel like he... Mark Thompson ever not going to narrate a right. Star Wars novel? Right. <laughs> uh, and I actually... Um, I, I didn't expect as much Obi Wan Kenobi in this um, as as I was anticipating, but it's actually... at least early on. I would have guessed, you know, some of those Jedi pop up later, but no, right, it's right, right, pretty pretty fast. We get Yoda too. It's well, I mean the council the council is discussing something, and um, I was honestly I was kind of taken aback with Mace Windu coming at it. It's like, do we just need to go in and assassinate him? And it's like <laughs> every one of the councils like, what you just say? <laughs> <laughs> I will I will say though that coming right off of Mark Thompson narrating the 25th anniversary of Heir to the Empire. Yeah. Um he apparently only has one voice for a uh, black characters. I was just going to say that. And that is a bit of a bummer cuz he <sighs> basically just does Lando. Um and you know, maybe if we had read this first, then we would have read the next one and been like he's just doing a Mace Windu impression, but it's just He's just doing the same voice, which is a bit of a bummer, and, and I get it. It's hard being a voice actor, especially in a Star Wars novel where there's so many characters, but that's a, it's a little bit of a bummer because it's it's like you couldn't, you couldn't come up with any other voice. I completely agree. But, there's only a... My, I was actually going to bring that one up that... that uh, I was really annoyed by that one, actually, that, like... I was, too. Um, it's different, but it's not different enough. And mm -hmm. it just feels like I love his Lando impression. I, j I, I, I adore his impression of that because it feels like it gets the character like to the T. But then all of a sudden I started listening to this and I'm like, that that's not even close to Obi-Wan. When did or Lando show up? I know. Yeah, it's like, when did Lando show up? <laughs> um, there was one more. Uh, I remember there was one more character um, that he was doing that I was like, wait, no. I thought his Obi-Wan was pretty good. Um also, his Yoda, I did too. not too yeah. bad. Um, but Ooh. let me think. I uh, I think I've gotten to the point in the book where Quinlan Voss meets Asajj Ventress, and uh, I'm just not there yet. I'm oh. maybe probably uh, barely back. Got it. Got it. Barely got it. back. Uh, but it's been it's it's been fun and it's been good. Uh, only complaint so far is that um, I feel like that was a bit of a disservice by Mark Thompson, which weird of me to say, but. There it is. Yeah, and it, it just might not be in his repertoire, I guess, for other voices at that point. I mean, we have listened to him three or four times, so it's 
it's getting to the point where he doesn't have any voices left to do. <laughs> um, but without getting too ridiculous, you know, we don't want like a SpongeBob type voice running around in the Star Wars universe, right. I guess. But. I guess Star Wars, Star Wars um, feelings now a little bit more of like story wise of where we're at. Um, what are your thoughts on the Jedi Council okaying an assassination attempt on Dooku? Needs to be done. <laughs> it needs to be done, and it's better for the Republic. We're getting... Mace Windu likes to draw from the dark side. I'm all in. Get rid of him. Take Dooku out. Anakin's going to do it, even though he should have been held <laughs> for a trial. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm i for it. I, I, I like when the Jedi go a little cuckoo for coconuts. I, I think it's just... Um, say what you want about The Last Jedi. Say mm -hmm. what you want about it. But the line Luke has where he says, look, in the Jedi's hubris, they allowed a Sith Lord to sneak up under their noses, rise up, and destroy them. And that is true. And when you, see, when you watch Clone Wars, you see the bones of that destruction, where you see the complete hubris in the Jedi. You see their cocky nature, and you see what they have become. And you see the, the, the great Jedi, Yoda, Obi-Wan, who, who learn their lessons, which is what Jedi do. So I, I like when we get things like this, where the, where the council's like, no, we have to go assassinate them. We're at war. And it's like, well, you're supposed to be Jedi. You're not supposed to be assassinating people. You're not soldiers. And yet they continue to be soldiers. And so I, the, that con connectivity I've always loved. So that's right. why I end up really liking that in the, in the book. But. Uh, yeah, what a, Did, you got any thoughts about uh, that? Uh, no, I, I, I completely agree with it. It just feels like the um, uh, something that the Clone Wars does, and I mean uh, just as a whole, is it does really kind of show the hubris of the Jedi um, at this yeah. point in time. And which I think is something like really important to get home because I mean like overall, like they're still, they're still peace, peacekeepers. They're still doing a lot of good, but honestly, I... I it feels like uh, between pride and hubris that they've just really just absorbed all of it by, by this point mm -hmm. in time. And their downfall was their own doing because of it. Yeah, and we dropped off a little bit on the High Republic stuff just because when we finished that novel, I know some other things came out, but and we got started doing this rewatch. But um, even a little bit in that High Republic novel, you see them... Um, not necessarily have that that kind of cocky nature yet and they they do feel especially some of those early jedi whose names i'm forgetting where they're very spiritual mm. and they're 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 very into like no we're here just to save the day we're just here to help out the people we're not soldiers and they really do take that seriously and it always uh, it makes me excited when those other novels come out because to slowly see that hubris build up and up and up and up and up to then where it clashes down in revenge of the zip Excuse me, sorry. Um, but yeah, I just I'm enjoying the book so far. It's not going to take us super long to get through it. Uh, although it might because <laughs> Clone Wars is taking up so much of my like time I spend watching or time I would listen to the audio book. Like I'm throwing on an episode of Clone Wars instead because I just that's a lot of episodes, and we're gonna have to do the same thing for Rebels. Yeah. But uh, it's worth it. I mean, we're we're. We are every. I've had like three people tell me a new show to watch right now, and I'm like, I just can't. I mean, with uh, Tanner and I are in a movie club together, so every two weeks we have to watch one movie. That's one thing I gotta watch, and then there might be a new episode of you know a show we're watching that's airing right now, like Falcon Winter Soldier, Invincible, and then every other time I'm watching TV, it is pretty much going to be for Clone Wars because <laughs> I just yeah we have to it's right. like there's that's 22 episodes we have to get through in six days it's a that's a lot of television yeah um but feel, we're I, getting it done balancing, we're almost to the s go ahead go ahead uh, oh I, I was actually really curious what your viewing um what your viewing habits have been on this has it been like pretty consistent of like I'm gonna binge this for a while or is it like I'm gonna watch four episodes a day kind of a thing no I just kind of throw it on when I need to throw it on. Like season four, I don't remember what it was. I think it was last Sunday or, or something. There was one night, one weekend last week where we didn't play games, which Tanner and I normally, you know, we go drop into the war zone or something. Were we dropping um, boys? Were we, were we dropping boys? <laughs> uh, but um, 
there was one night we didn't do that, so I was just like, I'm just going to binge Clone Wars and just play a bunch of Madden. And so I did, <laughs> and I got through, I remember it was, I think I think it was last, like, Friday or something, or Saturday, because I, I think we were filming three last week, and you uh, you were like, I have two episodes left, and I was like, I'm on episode 12 of season four. <laughs> I just powered through. <laughs> so if I get a day like that, that's one thing, but for the most part, uh, when I, I wake up early to work out, I don't put on the audiobook or music now i'm putting on clone wars for that hour so i get through probably two and a half episodes in the morning i now at my work when i have my prep time or my lunch i might throw on an episode while i'm sending emails because you know they have the nice little thing now where you can do other things in your computer and the little, little tv will just hang out with you on the side <laughs> corner so i've been uh i'll do that and then if if i'm behind if i'm not up 12 episodes like I am going into this week because I'm just I haven't started season five yet, but uh, if we get to like Friday and I've got 15 episodes left, then I start panicking <laughs> and I start <laughs> binging a bunch. But uh, what about you? Uh, it's been a weird mix. Um, weirdly enough, it's usually like Friday or Saturday that I am to end up finding like a couple of like serious just stretches of time where I'm not doing anything with anybody, mm. and uh, I'm just like. Hey, I just finished up the season. Um, I'm just gonna keep on watching, and I end up getting like eight or ten episodes ahead. Then for the rest of the week, it's like I'm going before, like right, right as I'm like either about to go to bed or something like that. I'll put on like two or three episodes. Um, yeah, it, it like out out in the living room, and then watch the third episode in bed, and then fall asleep. So uh, the mistake I make though is I got way ahead on episode f season four, and then I finished season four so fast that I should have kept going with season five to continue being ahead. But then instead, I was like, "No, I'm gonna watch the Winter Soldier and watch <laughs> Civil War." Like it, was, it was like, it was like, "No, Albert, you have to, you gotta go watch <laughs> season five. You're gonna get behind again." I haven't started season five. We have one week, <laughs> a little over a week, but uh, I am driving to. Uh, to uh, uh, another city here this weekend. And sometimes what I do when I go on long drives is I play an episode on my phone through my speaker in my car, and then I don't really watch it, but I'm listening to it, and I might have it where, like, I glance down at it every now and then, but um, I might do that, but I am driving with my sister, so I don't know how much Clone Wars I'm going to be able to watch. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but should we just talk about the show now? Should Heck we just yeah. transition into it? <laughs> So what uh what did you think of this episode? Oh, I just got a text from a Movie Meals original. Kyle. Oh. Oh, What's he, he? He's always he's always changing times on me when we're going to film videos. Of course <laughs> that's what he texted me at 9:30 <laughs> in the morning. Mm. Oh, sorry about that one. Uh oh, um, I'm not live on the show cuz I know he doesn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh I beginning of the season it was rough. Um the entire Water War arc, like I know, like we kind of talked about last week, I'm just, I didn't find it very, uh, I've never really found it super intriguing. Um, I'm not crazy about a lot of the, uh, uh, like a lot of the bubblehead armor and things that pe that a lot of the uh, surface breathers have to wear while going down. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, I don't know. To be frank as well, like, I mean, I get that they're like, hey, let's show, um, uh, this particular, sh Clone Wars draws a lot of inspiration from the, um, Clone Wars, the animated show, um, wh which, uh, like the 2D animated show that, which I think dropped in like, what was it, 2000, like, five? No, gosh, it must have been like, oh, one, actually. You mean the real bad movie? No, 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 not the movie, the 2D animated show uh, that dropped oh. in, like, 2001. Yeah, that was bad. It, it was, it had some interesting, it, I thought it had some fun moments, but most most of all, it's not great. Uh, I got a giant TV here, so instead of pulling up the episodes on my phone, I'm just whipping out Disney Plus right now. <laughs> <laughs> Love uh, the new setup. <laughs> let's see. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> um... I, Real quick, you know, Tanner, here's yeah. the question, because I just pulled it up. What's your icon on Disney Plus? What did you go with? Oh, you know I went with I Mando. Went with... Oh, I'm Grogu, baby. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's incredible. That's All right, too go. Good. Sorry, That's go ahead. Good. Episodes. Uh, 
do do do. I I was laughing so hard when the Gungans showed up and attacked, or were coming uh. in to uh, to help out, just because it was like. <laughs> It was like a uh, an Imperial Star Destroyer rolling up on the planet, looking like it's just dumping bags of garbage straight down, into, <laughs> straight down onto the planet. Seriously, though, no. <laughs> I, I I don't know. It just it felt so weird. Like I, I I don't understand why why they didn't bring any sort of like vehicles or anything of that nature. They're just gonna dump them from an insanely high height as they just jump down. But yeah. Man, uh, and then we go right into that, and then we get Shadow Warrior with Jar Jar. Jar Jar again. Stinks. And then we get Mercy Ma- It was like, the first six episodes were kid episodes. Yeah. Like, what? Why, George? Why? Why did you make him so kid? The first six. But then, you get into episode seven. Well, and I, eight and nine. Do you really... I'm not sure if I, if I agree that I think that the Water War arc is particularly kiddy. Um, just because, like, there's a lot of heavy themes, and also... Uh, sure, I are, just didn't love it. I, I just didn't think it was executed well. Um, but man, once you get to number seven, one of the best arcs in all of Clone Wars, with the darkness over Umbura. Yeah. Holy cow, it's a four-episode arc? Uh, we, we, it, it's... Uh, it almost it almost comes across like uh, Umbra at some points in times almost comes across like they're tr- they're drawing a lot of inspiration from like uh, v- the Vietnam War and Vietnam War um, yeah. inspiration at times. Yeah, um, definitely. And it's it's dark. It's all about the clones. Uh, once you're like, ooh, cool! This is gonna be an interesting episode as we like uh, as Anakin's leading leading the five zero first on Umbra. And then all of a sudden, he General Krell steps into the into the picture, and you're like, "What's this guy all about? He's he's taken yeah. over. He needs to, he needs to go back. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens." And he turns out to be a monster. And we, it's it's a very I don't. Did you feel as though it's a very gradual thing, or did you feel like he's just uh, he was a monster from the get go? No, I think he was not a monster from the get-go. I really liked his reasoning. Um, I mean, him saying that he was seeing the tide of this war and who's going to win and that he is changing sides because of it and that he Mm -hmm. wants to go to the dark side to survive. I think it's a unique perspective. I think it's something that Jedi would... There's got to be at least a Jedi, at least one who would do that. I mean, a lot of them had visions of the future, and if he he was very strong in the mystical part of the Force to see a pretty powerful vision of that the Jedi will fall, then, and he's like, I'm gonna, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm just gonna become Dooku's apprentice, and these clones don't matter. I want them to take each other out. I'm gonna do anything I can to get Dooku to let me be on his side. Like, I think that was strategic. It was smart. It was a really interesting way to handle the Jedi. I, I r- loved this arc. And to be honest, I forgot this arc was in the show. Really? Because it's been so long since I've watched it. Well, you know, I, haven't, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. I've watched this full run through since I was like 15. So, um, uh, I, this might be my favorite arc yet. In the whole show so far. I absolutely adored it. I mean, and I think my favorite, I can't, I think it was in Nine, Planet of Descent. I think it was, I think it was Plan of Descent. I almost said, I think I said Planet on accident. <laughs> plan, plan of Descent, I think, is that, that's where they actually put up the, where they actually capture him, or is that in Carnage of Krell? Um, Carnage of Krell is where they capture him. Um, Plan that of speech, Descent is when they fly, is they fly up and they, they take out the control that, ship. That speech where he, um, <clears throat> where he convinces the clones that they need to have a mutiny and they need to take, take out their general is fantastic. And then leading all the way up to, to them actually capturing him. But then the moment that... They realize they're shooting other clones, and he starts yelling, "Their clones! Their clones! Their take brothers!" Off your or helmet. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Take off your helmet. That that hit so well. I thought for a moment, I was like, "Am I watching Saving Private Ryan?" Right. Like, am I watching like a very intense war movie? How you and I have played Warzone for a year, and we've never referenced that we should that we're in the five zero first. I'll never know. <laughs> but we we need to start because I 
I this episode probably is by far these uh, this these four I think really are my favorite arc, and I think um. This is where I've I think I think as a kid this is where I have, must have fallen in love with the clones, and I because I think I've fallen in love again. Maybe yeah. I'm just that lonely, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I. Uh, I just I adored these episodes. It, I adored them, it, and I it, knew Maul was coming in this, and I knew yeah. Maul was at the end of the season, and I still love this more. Yeah, and that's just what's For real. Anyway, sorry, the, you go ahead. It, 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 it like there's a lot of really great discussions in this one. Of I mean, like, what does it mean to be a good soldier as well? With the discussion of like what, uh, not tops, but dogma. Uh, what dogma's doing. And, uh, like, going with Krell, it, because he's, like, in blindly loyal to this man when uh, Rex finally comes to the st- decision of, like, no, it's, um, being a good soldier doesn't mean always following orders. Sometimes it means doing the right thing. Those are men, and they are dead. Those were good oh, men. You, oh, it's man. so good. It's, those were men. Those were my men. It was Not clones. Men. Yeah. That's, yeah. Oh. Uh, it's so good. It is the oh, I'm sold. These are my favorite episodes so far in Clone Wars. Yeah, these are my favorite four. I uh, and there's no there's no Anakin. There's no Daddy One Kenobi. There's no Yodes. There's no Mace. There's just the clones. And I do find it funny of like how it always feels so <laughs> so easy to take out droid uh, droid control ships nowadays. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm Master Skywalker uh, took him out once as a kid. So <laughs> that, was, that line was so great. Like that was that was George just poking fun at himself. Yeah, and it was awesome. Just, just yeah, you know, Master Skywalker told you know General Skywalker told me once that he uh, took one of these out when he was twelve, <laughs> <laughs> and all the clubs are like, what? <laughs> he bit. We can't take one out now. What are you talking about? Um, no, I, I. Uh, I think, you know, and I'll be completely transparent here and honest, but I, as a kid watching these episodes, I remember for like, I rem- I just, I never loved the whole aspect of the clones a whole lot when I remember watching these first few seasons as a kid. And it must have been these episodes that made me just realize that I love the angle with the clones because even rewatching it now when we got through one through three i was sitting here kind of like man i I know everybody's obsessed with the clones and the 501st and i just never had that reaction and i was just i was excited to rewatch this to finally remember why because i remember as a kid having the change Mm -hmm. and then hit these episodes that i'm immediately in and how much i love the clones and the angles they're going with and i just now I'm pumped to see the full arc of Rex and everybody. Like I can't wait to get into that episode of Rebels because I remember losing my mind when they when I first watched the show when they showed up. Right. Um, and I just, oh, I'm just, I'm just loving it. It's talk about you know we're watching Invincible right now. Um, if you're not watching that audience, you probably really enjoy that show. But it's just when you think of the difference in obviously animation, the, obviously this is for kids. Um, and that is not, but I just think of like, this show is a kid show and it's still dealing with such powerful themes. Clone Wars is like, you think of Invincible, which it's clearly an adult show. So it's clearly allowed to deal with more, more, but kids can handle a lot more than people realize. And the fact that they, I mean, they talk about beer drinking in this they talk about drugs a whole lot more and disney is just okay with it. i mean i guess it yeah. was on cartoon network back in the day and they're a little bit more lax but they, had to, just, they actually had to so censor good. they actually had to censor a number of the episodes as well for uh uh really watching putting them on cartoon network yeah that's crazy i just george and i've heard george say that in interviews where he has said kids can handle more than i think people realize um and they can handle big themes and um i just oh, i just love these episodes but should we move on to some other episodes we like instead or should we just keep swooning on the 501 <laughs> can we just please keep swooning over them cuz i mean uh, they, and also rex like the mo- the moment he's feeling he's like there's fear you're shaking oh, <laughs> yes and then the, dogma's yeah. the one that takes the shot there is a great, great website called heroesandvillains.com that do, like, nerd merch. They have some amazing bomber jackets 
for the 501st. Oh, and I, love I've been that. wanting to get one for a long time. I just haven't been in the position to drop 80 bucks on a jacket when I need to buy like shelving and things like that. <laughs> but, um, all right. So after that, we get into kidnapped slaves of the Republic and that arc. Yep. And this escape from Cad- Cadavo. Um, yeah. Uh, I liked it. I liked it as well. Um, it just it's it, it's not as amazing because it's coming off of the heels of right now my favorite arc in the whole show. Honestly, that clone arc might be one of my favorite moments in all of Star Wars. Now I loved it so much. Yeah. Um, I should have texted you that those episodes slap. My <laughs> gosh. Um, but yeah, what did you think of this Cadavo uh, 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 arc? Kadavo, I I uh, arc. like you like you said. I I don't know. Um, well, there's like one or two other moments in this show that I think are really good, but it's I just don't feel like they come to the Umbara uh arc. Um yeah. that it just from from top to bottom, it's such an amazing arc. But that being said, Kidnapped, Slaves of the Republic, and Escape of Cadavo. Um I actually really enjoyed. Um we start to delve into some like heavy themes of uh <clears throat> slavery and also um gosh i'm trying to remember what is the name um i'm trying i i'm totally spacing it he's like we will make this new our our uh we will bring back our empire uh no what clue. i i don't i don't even i don't remember what the look name the is. better guy at star wars trivia can't ask the loser of star wars <laughs> trivia for a hard, deep cut name <laughs> Of a Clone Wars character, I'm not gonna know it. <laughs> Just not. It, it's uh, also. I mean, like, I really like the the back and forth that we get between Anakin and uh, and their queen um, for yeah. a minute, and some of the discussions the that rage. they have. Mm-hmm. The rage. I mean, this is a like this is an episode you point to when you'd say that the Clone Wars flushes out Zygerian Skywalker. Zygerian. Zygerian Empire. That's what it was. Yeah. That's uh, familiar. Um, we will we will reforge the the great slaving of Zygerian Empire, and uh, or, but oh, especially yeah. the moment when and like uh, what my like top ten Clone Wars moments. It's just one in this particular arc, but is uh, Obi Wan is talking to the Zygerian that's in control of the Tegrutus home planet, and all of a sudden you see the little hollow pad get like ripped away. Out of nowhere, yeah. and then Anakin grabs it and crushes it, and he's like, Zygerian scum! I will kill him! And you're like... I love it. Oh. And his eyes <laughs> always start to go a little bit to the, the color change that George had it go when he went to the dark side, which always never made a lot of sense. But <laughs> for a human to have this crazy, complete eye change because he's mad, but it's cool. Chosen one, um, it, but I mean, you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm the chosen one, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we get to a friend in need with Ahsoka. I thought that episode was fine, but it, it was clearly it was a, yeah, it was like okay. a filler to the next arc, right? Um, because then we get into deception, and we get into this might be the longest arc yet in the show, right? Because one, let's two, see, this is three. one, two, three. It's four, four. The same length as okay. Mbara. I guess it's not. It, it felt long to me. <laughs> um, I liked this arc. I didn't. I didn't. I I really liked it. I I I don't love it as much, obviously, as I like our clones. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought this was a unique story. Another story I had forgotten about was in the show, um, and I obviously it brings back Cad Bane, and I very much love Cad Bane. Um, and, but it it's a fun arc. Obi Wan doing all this kind of disguise, Mission Impossible face, Mission Impossible thing. Western it's, style things that yeah, are happening a lot. Uh, a lot of like, um, oh, uh, a lot of like quick thinking and cleverness that that, it, yeah. that is involved in a lot of this that I really really enjoy. My favorite of the arc was the box. I thought that was the the most fun of all the episodes. Box personally. Was fun. Box was fun. Um, and then Duco Duku breaking him out and man, I just anytime Cad Bane's on on screen, I just I perk up a little bit. He is such a great character. The voice. The uh, yeah. the dialogue that they give him, his his uh, his whole like persona and outfit, it's ah, oh, I love it, love it. Me too. Um. So then then we get into massacre. I yeah, love we get into massacre. Love Mounting, this episode. Brothers' revenge. Yeah, I I liked massacre a lot. Um, I 
I like that Dooku now is having to fight a war on two fronts. He lost somebody, and now it's like, well, they're going to continue to come after me if I do not stop them. And he has to go send a, a droid army there. Also, not to mention, um, we see, like, the Witches of Dathomir, like, in action. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, the you, you the uh, the army of the undead that they give to Asajj to uh, yeah. to fight it oh it's so freaky there's yeah, like yeah it's the first moment when they like what <laughs> I was watching and I was like oh my god I forgot this was a kids show as uh, like one of the sacks opens up and she comes out and her like jaw unhinges and just like scre- just lets out this banshee scream and. Then the rest of them start coming out and running towards the droids. Oh God, it was it was freaky. It was freaky. But again, it shows to the credit of George. Kids like to be spooked. You think of some of those yep. old Nickelodeon shows. Like what did they, um? It's like back in the early '90s they had shows. I don't know Courage, the name. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Uh, they did like something like Courage, but like I'm thinking of like they had like they had like a Goosebump show kind of thing. They had oh, like yeah. it was like a campfire show on Nickelodeon where like teens would sit around a fire and talk about spooky stories or something. And kids like to be a little spooked. I mean, I'm watching Avatar: the Last Airbender with my kids, and they they can handle some of those spookier moments, like some of the spirit world stuff. I mean, we're yeah. not to the face stealer yet, which I which that might be much, but most of the kids really. <laughs> They enjoy being spooked a little. There's a reason people hide behind corners and kids do it more than anyone and they scare people. It's, it, it, they can handle it. And they, especially in animation, I think they see that it's, it's not real. Right. You know, it's one thing. And I mean, although we're in such a different time frame now, though, where kids are on TikTok and they're seeing social media. So, like, I have six-year-olds who come up and they love Pennywise. And it's like, are you kidding? I would have... I would have crapped my pants for three days yeah. if I had seen Pennywise, <laughs> the new Pennywise. I mean, I saw the old Pennywise as a kid, and that freaked me out. But the new Pennywise with yeah. the eye roll, get out of town. It does. Um, it does make me re- like. I, I I am so excited to have conversations with the younger children. generation as they get a little bit older. Uh, like once yeah. they get to once they get when to we're like old the, men. yeah, when we're old men. Um, <laughs> Once they kind of get to like the eighteen or eighteen to like twenty ish mark, and they can sure. really kind of like think back of like, They're not what were what were the moments that like really like the the pieces of content that like really scared me? I am I am beyond fascinated to find out. Is it like did you find it out via like TikTok, YouTube? Was it like a certain movie that yeah, your parents showed you? They're exposed to so much more. I mean, they go, they can go onto YouTube and watch a Watch Mojo top ten creepiest moments of all time, and right. those are creepy videos that they make over there, or, you know, any, or any of those type of videos. They they can go watch, and they are creepy. They're eerie, but you know, Courage scared the crap out of me when I was seven years old. Like, did they have an experience like that? I don't even know if there's stuff on television right now that is doing that. Right for children. And anyway um but there's but i mean just like you're talking about though with social media and also just youtube as a whole there there um the algorithm is is just shovels some of that stuff just randomly yeah. all of a sudden or, or i mean even heck think about some of the adverts that start to happen i like i'm not big into horror but all of a sudden i start to get a bunch of horror adverts and i'm like i don't want to really be watching this thanks yeah. man and uh, there's a lot of y- parents that are our age now who will be showing their kids things like Courage the Cowardly Dog, which is on a lot. Of, I mean, if these p- kids are watching things on streaming, that's on HBO Max right now. Right. Like, that's where Courage is because I know because I watched a couple episodes with uh, a friend of mine, uh, Zach <laughs> Summers, the other day. But um, or a couple weeks ago when he was here. But um, yeah, it's uh, I'm just curious what spooks kids these days because there's and I, I'm just I don't watch. I'm not on, I don't have cable. Like, you know, honestly, I would pop on, this is going to sound so weird. I, uh, if I had cable, I would, and when I lived at my parents for a little bit, when they had cable, like I definitely checked out what was playing on Cartoon Network or Disney or, or Nickelodeon. Like, what are they showing? And most of the time, I mean, there are new, new things. Most of the time though, it was always a rerun of something I watched or a new episode of a, you know, like SpongeBob, which is never going to die or something like that. And and every now and then it would might be something, but like Disney goes so much to the live action newer right. shows, and um, Cartoon Network has such different animated shows. But I'm not into any of that. I'm uh, get out of here with some of that new <laughs> stuff. People are talking about Gumball, Gumby, or whatever it's called. I sound like such an old man, but get out of here with that hey. show. Go watch Codename Kids Next Door, like a real kid should. I uh, uh, I'm gonna throw it out there. You said specifically Gumball. That show is, is that way smarter. Called? 
and way funnier than people give it credit for. It is don't really <laughs> funny. <laughs> I want to be old and grumpy about it, Tanner. I've never even watched it. I don't care. <laughs> Although I'll say, we're going on a tangent here, but I will say one show that people love that hit at the very tail end of like our time um, is Adventure Time, and I could not. Still to this day, can't stand that show. I can't get into it. I find either. it so not funny, and I make I make no sense because this is such a deep cut. But if you watched Chowder on Cartoon Network, I love that show. Are you kidding me? I watched Flapjack, the like Grand Adventures of Flapjack. That show is so stupid, and I loved that show growing up. But Adventure Time, which is apparently smart, I've watched many episodes, and I can't get into it i just couldn't get into it i don't love the new animation style that it seems cartoon network goes with um and they ruined teen titans so whatever oh teen titans go yeah uh, anyway let's get back to it so massacre and then bounty did you like bounty not crazy about bounty um it's okay it's just not the best i liked I, I liked getting the fleshing out of massage ventress but man it just i don't know it just i don't like boba fett being used as a device to just get you excited you know what i mean he's just there because it's like oh it's boba fett as a kid but it's uh and it was there to sell toys you know young right. boba fett toys but i i was there more for for uh asajj ventress as well but then then we get into brothers and we get into revenge yeah, we great do. way yeah, to, we do. <laughs> to end it. And I want to, you know, Brothers is great, but most of Brothers is just him searching for Maul, finds him towards the tail end of the episode. It is. And then, but, yeah. Dude, the end bit when we get the oh, introduction I'm, of Maul. Yes, I was about to say that. Um, Sam Witwer does such a freaking good job playing Maul and it has been such a long time since I've seen these episodes because the only thing I rewatched before season seven was half of season six um or maybe I watched all season six but also, but with him freaking out with because his memory is so destroyed and him not knowing what to do is just oh it's so good and he still has fragments of what he remembers and then the second he gets back to himself in the fi in the finale and he's he, you see the start of the real dark side within Maul and the revenge plot that he's about to go on where he yeah. is going he because he hates he's a, talk about a war on two fronts he wants to take out the empire and he wants to take out Obi-Wan Kenobi so it's oh but anyway you go what did you think I, I I completely I completely agree with you in the fact that Sam Witwer like uh he has the I think I think it's um when I was watching it it's like if you watch it with subtitles I didn't watch it watch this one with subtitles but previously at one point in time I did um it, it will say for uh what he's like what he's discussing and what's happening of like indistinct rambling but if you really listen to it oh my god it's all off the cuff by Sam Witwer and he's such a big nerd that he is all about like he it's like the far yeah. above far above we don't know where we'll fall and, and it's oh man it's so good just the the what he's able to bring to the table of like going from this just absolutely psychotic manic character to all of a sudden we get the transformation in revenge and it's like yeah oh my you know God. sam sam Whitwer should be a bigger star than he is and maybe he he is you know maybe the roles have been there and he doesn't take them or maybe he he hasn't been offered them but he should be bigger than he is i know he's on a show it might be a youtube show i know he does a dungeons and dragons like show with a bunch of other like the creator of like um rick and morty is on this thing and they all get together and play dungeons and dragons together i mean he nice. is an absolute uber nerd i know he was on supernatural for a while um He's in The Walking Dead for one episode on the first episode. Um, fun fact, if you didn't know that and you're watching, he plays the zombie in the tank, if you've seen that show. That's um, right. He, uh, he was in the, the movie The Mist um, way back when, and he's actually very good in that. And that's a, that's a fun little horror movie. I'm going to throw that out there. I watched it for the first time last year. It's a fun little horror movie. Uh, makes me want to watch the show. Anyway, but Sam is such an uber nerd. I, you know, I don't always agree with him on some of his points. I mean, I know he really dislikes Last Jedi. I really like it. Um, I know he's got some takes on Rise of Skywalker that I don't agree with. But he is 
like I would love to sit down and buy that man a drink and and talk with him for hours because I just I know that I am not I mean if you watch the trivia battle you know that I am not a deep well of Star Wars knowledge let alone nerd knowledge I've got my places but I but I and Sam Witwer is the one who I have first ever heard say this because he said this talking about Freddie Prince Jr. Um, and he said you know Freddie doesn't know he's not going to beat you in a trivia battle but Freddie understands what Star Wars really is about what the force is about and what it means and I feel I get that so that and I think that's and when I heard that I was immediately like that's exactly what it means to be a Star Wars fan is you just need to understand what it means to 100% to actually love this it doesn't necessarily matter about the movies but he is just he's a wealth of knowledge and I don't I've never heard the story of how he got this role but I would love to know how cuz I know he voices the emperor eventually in rebels as well i believe mm. um but he plays darth maul i mean that must have been a dream come true for him it getting that call that he is going to be in star wars the clone wars tv show with working with dave filoni and george lucas and he gets to play darth maul are oh. you kidding me the conversations they must have had yeah back then i mean the conversations were must have been like i would have loved to have been a fly on the wall but I've gone on a tangent. I just, no, it, he plays him so freaking well. It's all it's 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 incredible. And you, dude, I when I when I was sitting down to watch Clone Wars for the first time, um, I uh I unfortunately like I watched a couple of the early episodes um at one point in time because I was a big Star Wars fan, and I'm like, oh, I know what this is going to be. So I'm like. I'm just I'm just gonna step back from this one, <clears throat> and then later on in life, I had some people recommending to me. It's like, dude, you need to watch Clone Wars. I'm like, really? Uh, why is that? And they're like, oh man, and like you you get some of these like absolutely amazing arcs, and Darth Maul comes back, and I'm like, you want me to watch a show? <laughs> First of all, don't spoil that, you turd muffin. Whoever told you to do that is a wackadoodle. What? Uh, don't spoil one of the coolest things of the whole show. Anyway, continue. Anyways, anyways, uh, I like. I mean, I actually didn't think of it as that that bad of a thing because, like, I I was still shook. I was shook about uh, like how much I came to love that character. I was so. Uh, I was actually <laughs> almost almost angry at first when that happened. When I had heard that, I was like. They're seriously going to bring back a character that was cut in half and sent down a tube in Naboo. That man should be dead. Deader than doorknobs. And then the fact that this show is able to come through and they're like, make me excited about a character that got cut in half and it, it was played by Sam Witwer who just knocks the whole thing out of the park. Oh my god, it's it's incredible. Incredible. I... One of the most it's amazing so good. things about the show. You know, it makes a little more sense. He got cut in half. He fell down a chute. You know, the lightsaber cauterizes the wound. I could see it. Uh, but the Emperor gets thrown down a chute, blows up, and then the Death Star blows up again. He blows up twice, but he survived. Oh, but he had um, plans I hate on the, plans. I hate that. I plans. hate the Rise of Skywalker. I believe he would have plans on plans, but those plans are stupid, JJ. <laughs> you made a bad movie, and I'm sorry, but you did. And I still like you as a director. I watched your TED Talk about your mystery box the other day, and I still like you. But, man, I am a little bit butthurt still. When we get – I sometimes I go to bed at night, and I think about what, how excited I am for – the last Jedi conversation we're going to have because I just, I'm excited to have that. I haven't had a good last Jedi combo in so long. Yeah. Um, but then I immediately go to man, that rise of Skywalker video. It is the first star Wars piece of media. I actively very much dislike. Uh, it's the very first. There's a few that I can I, I can take things from that like I like Solo enough. I think Solo's got some really great moments. I mm. think it's a little bit lackluster at times, but um, and Clone Wars obviously has some of those episodes that aren't great. But like, I just watched maybe a top five Star Wars moment of all time for me. Like, but Rise of Skywalker, I just do not like. And um, speaking, of, yeah, we're going on a tangent here because that's what we do on another Happy Landing. Um, <laughs> Speaking of, and I think I may have told you this, so forgive me if I have, but I'll tell the viewers. Um, when I was coaching over at the high school, um, 
there were a couple kids talking about Star Wars, and I, I only, I perk up, but I don't necessarily jump in. Um, depending, it depends. But uh, so one of the kids, this boy, it's probably a sophomore or something, said to one of the girls something like, um, "Oh, you, you, do you like the Last Jedi?" She was like, "No." And he goes, "Good, good, good, good," because that is just trash on trash. And then uh, he goes, yeah, but the third one, The Rise of Skywalker, was so good. And I immediately was like, okay. I was like, in my head, I was like, this kid is old enough. He's not my six-year-old. He is not a six-year-old. He, there's no disbelief. He should understand. He's literally learning storytelling in school right now. He should understand that. I mean, I was like, I don't care about The Last Jedi, but I, I care about this Rise of Skywalker point because you should understand <laughs> storytelling. At least, at least <laughs> Last Jedi is trying something, whether it works, but the, La the Rise of Skywalker doesn't even try anything. It took everything I had not to walk over and punt him across the room. <laughs> I, was, I was so done with him. I was, I was, and he wasn't even on my, my squad. He, didn't, he wasn't even supposed to be in that room, and I let him be in there anyway, and I immediately was like, hey, you need to get back get to out get out <laughs> <laughs> i do think there are some kids though that push social media narratives i think there are a lot of people out there that you know and i you may disagree with me here but i do believe that it is 60 who like the last jedi 40 percent that do not like it i think it's leans more heavily towards i especially now because now i rarely see hate but i will see huge trends of people loving it um i mean it'll randomly trend on twitter I mean, I think a couple months ago, it just randomly was trending on Twitter, I think, as Ryan Johnson came back to Twitter after taking a hiatus or something, and, and everybody was like, man, this movie is so great, or blah, 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 but, uh, like, uh, he, I just, I lost my complete train of thought, because I just can't stand. I do think it is 60, <laughs> I do think it is 60, 40, but I do think there are a lot of people who see a few TikToks about how The Last Jedi stinks, and they, they just go, uh-huh. I agree because my favorite YouTuber said that. And I, I, that's something that I, I wish people – you should make up your own mind about movies. You know, it's one of the things I love about doing the show with you where we agree on quite a few things, on most things. But we don't agree on some. But we sit here. We analyze it. We have a conversation about it. We might get a little heated. But that's okay. I mean, <laughs> even last night – you were witness to a heated battle about another show between me and a friend of ours. So – I don't well, know if it was there a was a battle. I just got attacked. Yeah, there were some. <laughs> there were some things that were said in that where I was like, "Really?" There were some things that were said in that that I almost, I almost clapped hard, <laughs> and then and then he he reared back and realized that he was being ridiculous. Yeah, and apologize, but I almost clapped hard. But anyway, <laughs> Lord knows he's not gonna watch this show. But uh, um, but even though he came back and said I didn't mean to, to come back like that, it can get heated. I mean, we just had a huge nerd bracket marvel off and it got heated in that debate i mean tanner yeah. was was barely conscious for half of it but <laughs> um but he but but i miss those and i don't like now that it's like people go last jedi is just pure trash no reason why or they just they just say it's garbage it's like no let's have a conversation about it i'd like to hear people's points on why they don't like it i want to hear the differences i want you to hear mine why i like it you know where my background comes from that's how you bond that's how you you get better not all the jedi agreed with each other right i mean look at look at obi-wan and uh what's his name the guy in the book we're reading why can't i think of it i just dark lost disciple it. quinlan voss quinlan voss yeah look at those two they're yeah. polar opposites but they're still jedi getting the work done right anyway uh clone wars <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do we have any, I mean, you can also go, do you have anything off of anything I've said or Clone War? It doesn't matter. You I think it's close. Me, you can do whatever. Honestly, I mean, I guess the one thing that I would think, I think it's closer to 50-50 than we realize. Um, I could be entirely wrong about that Lies. one, but I have no idea what the split is on that one. But it definitively, The Last Jedi, uh, and I'm not saying this is as a good or bad thing in the, uh, like at all. I, I think it is just, it, The Last Jedi, uh, split the fan base. Just, just as it a definitely fact. did something. It definitely uh, caused a poo storm to fly around. Right, and I mean, but I mean, like that's that's also one of the points that I have to that I do have to give Last Jedi. Like, um, don't get me wrong, bold. like Ambitious. it's it's bold and it's taking Star Wars in a different direction. I have to give it that because um, when you get something like if we got Force Awakens rinse and repeat like if we just got a carbon copy of um episodes four five and six throughout yeah um the, i i would have uh 
I, I would have been upset with that because it's like, you literally just like, yes, it's cool. You're feeding us like new starships, uh, new, new technology that's being brought forth and awesome music. And it's a really fun space adventure, but you're literally just reskinning everything for a newer generation. Yeah. And just going forward with it. And I'm, yeah. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be on board with that. Um, be, because unfortunately some of, and I'm not saying all, but some of the critics of the last Jedi, um, some, one of the big criticisms that I, that I ever heard leveled to it was it needed to be more like the, yeah, uh, more of what we, what we got before. And it's like, well, mm. See, you need to be able we, to push Star Wars in new. We need to be yeah. able to put push Star Wars in new, bold, and interesting areas. Um, do I uh, do I think it succeeds in some of those spots? Yes. Other spots, no. That's my take. I without getting too crazy here, but screw it, we're gonna get too crazy here. Uh, um, I do, I think what Ryan did is he took the themes of Empire, and I know you disagree with this because I've poked fun at you for it but at the, because at the end of empire they lose they lose the heroes lose the battle right. um people talk about infinity war being the first real thing to ever do that no it was empire strikes back the heroes lose luke is lost he is completely out of it the han is gone they lose at the end of the last jedi they do lose there's the whole rebellion it fits in the falcon there's not a lot of people left and by the time we get to Rise of Skywalker, oh, the rebellion's pretty big. Um, and it's and I think he just he took the themes that he saw. He said, you know what, we need to lose by the second movie, and we need to get this question over that JJ set up. And honestly, I think the worst thing JJ did was make it a big deal who Ray is. I think it's the worst decision that he made because I like that Ray is no one. Ray could have been Ang of star wars she she could have been the avatar of star wars and created this new idea this new thing but jj was so flipping caught up on who she was and i think that was the biggest mistake and because i think the last jedi comes down to one I mean, we're getting way too into this but last jedi comes down to one main problem who um, do you like the way Luke is taken? Do you not like the way Luke is taken? Because I think everybody else pretty much agrees on everything. I don't love Canto Bite. I think it was his attempt to try to be prequely, and it didn't work. And that's why it didn't work, because it's prequely. But I, I, but I think it always comes down to Luke. Luke is the biggest reason why people either do or do not like it. There are other little things throughout, and we'll get into those more. But... Um, I just lost my train of thought. Anyway, Last Jedi will be such a fun discussion. Uh, I'm so ex I'm really excited about that one. Uh, gosh, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring like a whole essay of my thoughts on that whole. <laughs> that on that, that whole might be a two parter because you and I might go for a good two a and a half three hours. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that might maybe a three parter. That thing that video might be insane. And I've thought about bringing on other guests. I, I, I've, I've never mentioned this to you, but I thought, of, like, maybe we bring on a guest for this movie or that movie, and I just don't think we can sustain it because you and I already go off way too much. And I just don't – like, if we ever do it for another video maybe when we're done with our rewatch. Right. But right now, you and I – I mean, you and I, Rise of Skywalker 2, we might go for hours. Like, we need to make it wake up earlier for those ones. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, maybe we should do, like, instead, like, a live watch through. And we watch while we do like a commentary, and we pause and discuss. Maybe we should do ooh, something like that too. Ooh, that's pause ooh, and discuss the I things like we do or don't like. I like um, that. That'd be kind of fun too. That might be a fun little thing to to do. Um, I'm also really excited for Solo because Solo had so many problems around it that I really want to dive deep into that. That's going to be a long one, but we should probably wrap this show up since we're probably, done with probably, season uh, four. We've gone off the rails. What's your favorite season so far? I think my favorite season is still three. I'm going to scroll through three again. Um, three seems to have, um, like I said previously last week, uh, it's got the most, like, um, it's got some... Consistent good episodes. Yes, consistent good episodes throughout it. I completely agree with that. But um, season four, scrolling through again, season three does have probably close to the... Maybe not... Because I didn't love one of these arcs, and they do... Yeah, I think season four has my favorite 
arc of the entire season so far, but season three, I think, from top to bottom is the best so yeah. far. I, um, I, I'm I actually in complete agreement. This one's got some of my favorite arcs. Excited to see five goes. Um, Although I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, because it's the most fresh in my head, it's probably going to be hard not to say season seven is my favorite because all of those episodes are so great. Yes. <laughs> Um, and then um, they just hit. Season 5 also has some excellent episodes because that's where we get more um, Maul. Uh, Maul back into the fold, yeah. Back into the fold. Season 6, too, though, those last two or the last three with Voices, Destiny, and Sacrifice with Yoda are just... Incredible. <sighs> Those are great. Though, I must say, I must say something that, that I'm not crazy about Season 6 is, like, it, the fa- um, with the... Uh, season 6 was supposed to come out on... Um, they were planning on a season six, but it never really ended up happening. Uh, so a lot of these, there was a lot of like episodes and things that were cobbled together, um, but there, there wasn't. There's not as many arcs, and uh, that's where that we exist. get this novel, right. isn't it? Isn't this supposed to be? Isn't this like episodes that were supposed to be in a season six or possibly seven? Exactly. Before they got canceled. Um, and and, and uh, when did they move over to Disney? When did did they move over to Disney just for? Season six, because uh, they they aired some on Disney XD, didn't they? Mm, I'm pretty sure. Eventually, se- they moved from Cartoon Network. So I don't even think season six. I think season six was introduced on Netflix. They had oh, all. I of, think you told me that. I think all. I'm pretty sure that all of these episodes were finished, but they were never aired. Uh, and mm. so they ended up slapping them all together in this like final six season, and then putting them on Netflix. Um, I could be wrong about that though. Uh, but man. I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm excited for I'm really excited for season five, but um, there's some good moments to look forward to. Oh, we did. <sighs> there's the secret weapons arc though that I'm really not a fan of. Um, but man, so uh, the younglings arc for the gathering when we actually go to Ilum and they find their crystals. God, I'm so excited for that arc. Yeah, me too. Sorry, I was looking up. So Clone Wars got canceled when Disney bought Lucasfilm. So it was running on um, Cartoon Network and then was canceled. And they just had whatever they had finished. And I think it looks like, yeah, that's when it came out to Netflix when they had it, when they started making a deal with Netflix until they got Disney+. Plus. Um, cool. Hmm. All right. Well, guys, for another happy landing, I think we are going to get out of here, so thank you to the Movie Meal patrons for supporting us. Go get some merch, guys. I'm telling you, this stuff is super comfortable. been in contact with Teespring. We're trying to get some stuff to happen. It's been a pain, but uh, uh, trying to make some cool things happen. We do have some cool ideas. Kyle's been, I'm going to tease it, Kyle's been working on some cool new style logos that aren't just necessarily sayings from our show or plays on movie quotes. We're still going to do those because we think those are very fun. Um, uh uh but yeah so please go get some merch it would really help us out uh, remember to like subscribe share all the everything's linked in the description check out all the another happy landing episodes share us around um and for another happy landing we are out of here bye